Hello, macroeconomics class. Um, as we move on this week, you guys have to work on um, your um, checkpoint assignment. The checkpoint assignment is based on the simulation that is in econ land and that you can find uh, the Harvard Business Publishing link. When you click on this link, it will take you to the simulation page, which is this, um, and where it shows you how to play um, this econ land simulation. In the econ land simulation, you're going to pretend you are the economic advisor for the country of econ land and you have seven years of decisions to make. Now, at this point of the course, you actually do not have all the knowledge needed to make these decisions based on economic, on all the economic principles. You have learned about GDP, unemployment, and inflation this week, and you kind of um, have an idea of what unemployment is, what inflation, what GDP is, and how there might be an interaction, right? If GDP grows, so if we're having economic growth, the unemployment rate should be lower there's going to be less unemployment. The inflation rate can be steady. It can also start going up. But you're going to make decisions just based on your common knowledge that you have and what you think is the best decision to make. Um, there isn't any right or wrong decision. There is only how you can explain um, the decision you made. Now, for the assignment, you're using the, the template of the final project, but you're not going to fill it all up. You're actually going to focus only on the introduction, which you're just going to keep the same. And then you're going to put the table three um, of your simulation report, which is literally shows um, how your GDP, unemployment, inflation trended. Um, and then you're going to use the information from your table um, to summarize what happened during your seven years. So really the only part that you will need to write and replace is the one I'm highlighting right now in this video. Forget the rest, fiscal policy, taxation, government expenditure, all the rest you are not filling in because you do not have the tools to fill it in correctly but from an economic point of stand standards. Um, you will work on those when you get ready for the final project um, in module eight during week eight. So up here, what are you going to do? You're just going to explain what happened in the simulation. Now, you can use two or three sentences to explain it. You might need a little more depending, but just make sure that you follow all the elements of the rubric. The rubric can be found under module three. And you can go down here to 3.2 simulation checkpoint assignment, click on requirements and rubric. When you click on this, it'll come up with all the requirements and the rubric for the assignment. So first you have to include the simulation image. You can include table three. Some students also like to include the final image that comes up um, when you finish playing the simulation that shows all the trends. That is fine, you know. You're never going to get docked for including too many images. Um, so just make sure you put in information that allows you to develop your explanation, right? Your sentences. First of all, macroeconomic indicators. Explains how the decision impacted key macroeconomic indicators, such as real GDP growth, unemployment, and refers to the graphs real GDP growth and unemployment rate to illustrate. So the graphs would be your final results for the econ land. Um, so in this case, you just have to explain how GDP growth and employment trended. That's all it wanted to know. Say, for example, you decided to increase expenditure or to increase or decrease taxes in your simulation. All you would do here is explain that after you made that decision, what happened to real GDP growth? What happened to unemployment? Did they increase and did they decrease? You do not have the knowledge, you do not have the tools right now to explain why they decreased or increased beyond what you read this week, um, you know, from MANQ, from, from your textbook. The other element that you need to um, develop is how the changes in interest rates impacted inflation and also GDP um, and unemployment. So this is an important part that often a student might miss. Um, what changes did you make to interest rates? 
Did you increase or decrease the interest rates? Maybe you kept them steady and the same through the whole simulation. It doesn't matter. Whatever decision you made about interest rates, it is here that you need to explain, first of all, how they impacted inflation. Now, in this case, you do have some information that you have learned from this week's reading of how inflation can be affected by changing interest rates and then were the other factors affected was growth and employment also affected so here you could integrate um, your uh, government policy decisions of spending and taxation in addition to interest rates how is gdp and employment affected you really would probably have um one a paragraph on GDP and employment, one paragraph on interest rates and inflation, and then that's it. You finish with the assignment. There is nothing else um, you you can do. You show, uh, use your graph, use the data that you have received, you know, that you have from the simulation to explain the trends. If it went up and if it went down, don't just say uh, the GDP went up by how much did it go up or that it changed. Be specific because, um, you know, you're, you're explaining what happened and I need to know just how you perceive what happened based on your decision. That is really what I'm gonna be reading. As I said, you don't have to worry about anything else. The only part you have to worry is the highlighted part. Uh, you don't have to worry about the rest of the assignment because that will be developed during the final project. Um, the simulation is fairly easy to pay. Uh, let me find it, pull it up. Here it is. When you start your simulation, you can choose one of these scenarios. I mean, you can start with a base case, which is just normal um, medium volatility um, and medium economic growth. So just any normal times, economic times. When you get here and you start playing, as you can see, this is how you can determine changes in government spending, tax rates, interest rates. Um, you are given some information, like, for example, what's happening in the rest of the world. Um, last year say the world economy did well and econland experienced solid economic growth so you're giving a bit of background where are you starting at unemployment is at five percent inflation at two percent and the budget deficit is 2.8 percent of the gdp which is really low so everything is under control um, the total government debt is 60 percent of the gdp which is a healthy government debt 60 percent um so now the outlook for next year is moderately positive. Um, so you know that there's going to be economic growth. You don't have to worry uh, about a lot. What do you want to do? Interest rates right now are at 3%. The income tax rate is 24%. The corporate tax rate is 30%. And government expenditure is $30 billion. So here you can decide um, if you want to keep everything the same. You might want to make a change. So let's just say that I keep everything the same because everything is smooth, happy, and I don't want to make any changes. I'm going to submit my decision for year one, and I'm getting my first outcome. By not making any changes, my real GDP growth went down. So I had a steady GDP growth of 2.5%, and now I'm at 1%. Unemployment increased, which is in line with a lower GDP growth. The inflation rate maintains steady, which is good. And my budget per surplus um, actually was good because I didn't increase um, government expenditure, and I have a good approval rating. Now, the approval rating matters. Everybody would like to have a positive approval rating, but it will not matter for the grade. So you can have the best approval rating if you can't explain, um, you know, if you don't develop enough the content on explaining uh, what decisions you made and what the outcomes were. Um, it doesn't matter what approval rating you have. The approval rating will not improve your grade for this assignment. Um, and as I said, I'm not expecting um, a lot of integration of economic principles beyond what you read um, this week about GDP, unemployment, and inflation, because that is all the knowledge you have. So that is all the knowledge I want you to put into uh, your assignment. No more than what you already know. This is just a way to appreciate what you're learning as we move forward. We're going to play the simulation again during the discussion board of module seven. And so at that point, you will have the tools 
to play uh, the simulation, knowing that if you increase government expenditure um, and expand, you know, the government spending, you might simulate economic growth, but you might also simulate um, inflation, right? So that at that point, you will know. But right now, you just know um, a little bit. You're, we're just touching the tip of the iceberg, and this is just a way to get your feet wet um, and in learning how to appreciate and apply what we'll be learning um, throughout the rest of the course. So that is all for this week's assignment. Again, I cannot stress it enough. We're only completing the highlighted part that I'm showing you, which is part of the introduction. The first uh, paragraph remains the same. You can put your image uh, from the simulation. As I said, you can put this image, which by the end of week seven will have uh, you'll have the bar graph all the way filled in um, by the end of year seven. Um, but you can also um, get a report, which would look more like this. So the report, you can go to table three. For example, you can copy the table three to the clipboard but if you paste whatever copies to the clipboard it will not have columns it just comes a bit of a gibberish so my um suggestion is to snip it take a screenshot for example and paste it into your into the word document this way it comes nice and clean just like it shows in the simulation if you have any questions whatsoever all you have to do is email me. We can set up uh, Zoom meetings. Um, we can communicate by email. Just reach out and we can work together. Uh, this way you can submit a successful assignment. Have a great week.